Hey, good evening. Great to be with you. Let me tell you something. I get more compliments on this shirt than anything else in my wardrobe. Do you love the shirt? Everybody seems to love the shirt. If you love the shirt, give me a thumbs up. If, if you don't love the shirt, give me a thumbs up. Either way, I think I think a thumbs up would be fine. Hey, it's great to uh, great to chat with you a little bit tonight. It's uh, it's been kind of a crazy day here in my little world. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Cohen. Great to have you both with us. Uh, kind of a crazy day. Uh, my refrigerator is busted. Uh, I found that out yesterday when things stopped being cold. Not really a genius or anything, but that that was the first thing that tipped me off. And I was frustrated when I realized the refrigerator was broken. I was like, well, this is it, you know. I gotta go buy a new refrigerator and and then I talked to a friend of mine who works on stuff like that and he says no oh, you you can do this anyone can do this easy easy fix and I said no I can't I can't fix a refrigerator and he just encouraged me yeah you can you can fix the fridge and we tracked down which part it was it was actually a fairly inexpensive part and uh, and he said uh, you, you can fix this so I'm gonna try um, so I ordered the part for my refrigerator. I ordered it yesterday. I paid extra for overnight shipping because I think that refrigeration is important and it didn't show up today. Ordered it yesterday, paid for overnight shipping. It's not here yet. And so today I called the company that I'd bought the part off of and I tried to remain calm and and I, shipping was actually more than the part itself, if that tells you anything about how cheap the part was and, well, how expensive shipping can be. And so I talked to this guy named Kevin today uh, with the company, and I said, Kevin, it was supposed to be here. He's like, it hasn't shipped yet. I'm really sorry. And I got to be honest, I almost lost it with Kevin. I mean, this has been a huge frustration for me, and, and I, was, I was just really close to losing it. Kevin apologized, and then he did this he refunded my shipping cost. Took it all off. I mean, my, the bill is now like less than half. It's next to nothing. And I said, wait a minute, Kevin, are you canceling my order? He says, no, 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 you're still gonna get it when it, when it arrives, but you're not gonna have to pay for shipping. So, so later this evening, I'm checking my email and there it is, there's the shipping notice in the email and, and if everything works right, uh, it should be here by 10.30 tomorrow morning. So by 11 or maybe noon, we're gonna find out whether or not I'm a refrigerator repairman. Please do not call me to come fix a refrigerator though. I don't think that would be a great idea. But I'll be honest, I, I could have lost it with Kevin. When, when I talked to him. I mean, here, I had gone to the trouble. I had gone to the expense of paying extra. And I don't know if you've tried to live without a refrigerator, uh, but it's not fun. You, you kind of have to do triage on what food you like best. Uh, you get as much stuff as you can into the coolers, or you get it into a neighbor's fridge, or you know somehow you get it someplace else, and then you start throwing stuff away. Well, I'm probably never gonna eat this. I probably shouldn't eat this now. You, you kind of just do that. and. And it's such a huge hassle, but as I was talking to Kevin, the realization hit me, this isn't Kevin's hassle. This is, this is my hassle. And, and Kevin wasn't the guy who was supposed to mail me the part. It's not his fault. And, and losing my temper is not going to make my refrigerator any cooler. If anything, it's just gonna make me a little hotter. And so, and even more, here's the amazing thing. It was Kevin who showed me grace. It was Kevin who refunded my shipping. It was Kevin who decided that his company is going to eat the cost of getting this part to me overnight. Uh, well, overnight as <laughs> in tonight. Uh, it's still a frustrating situation, but I can't help but will come away from it feeling a little blessed. And, and I think it helps that lately as I've been in the Word of God, as I've been in the Bible, I, I've been in Philippians 2 quite a bit over the last week or so, just in my own reading and, and in preparing for some messages. I, I've been in Philippians, and you know, the Philippian letter is a beautiful letter. We, we often talk about how it's a letter of joy. The word joy appears more in Philippians than, than other letters, I, I guess. That's what I've been told all my life anyway. Uh, it, it is a letter of joy, it has a lot to say about joy. But it, when you read it close and you pay attention to these people and what they were going through, this was a church that was kind of in a bad spot. 
there were disagreements going on in the Corinthian church. They were at each other's throats. There were these two women who were about ready to split the church in two, and Paul doesn't take sides with them. Well, he kind of does take a side. He takes Jesus's side. And in Philippians chapter 2, we have what is, in my estimation, one of the most beautiful pieces of poetry in the entire Bible and maybe, maybe in, in all of literature itself. But it begins, I want to begin actually in, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, which is right before the poem begin, begins. Paul says this to them, as this is his advice to them. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others as more significant than yourselves. Let each of you, each of you, every one of you, look not only to his or her own interests, but also to the interest of others. And then he says this, have this mind among yourselves, which is also yours in Christ Jesus. In other words, have this mind among yourselves, the way you treat each other's, because this is the mind that you received in Christ. This is the way Jesus treats you. And then he goes into this beautiful poem. It, it may even be an early Christian hymn. We're not really sure. But he says of Jesus, who though he was in, form of, in the form of God, he did not, cons did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, being found in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Wow, it's a beautiful picture. Maybe, as I say, maybe it's a song, but it's a beautiful example of the humility of Jesus. But did you notice how Paul starts it out? Paul doesn't start it out by saying, this is how Jesus is. He starts it out by saying, this is the attitude you should have. An attitude that puts other people first, an attitude that considers the feelings of others first and the convenience or inconvenience of others first, an attitude that seeks to serve everyone, an attitude that says, I'm going to treat you the way Jesus treats me. And I'm not going to treat you the way you've treated me. I'm not going to treat you the way I want to treat you. I'm going to treat you the way Jesus treats me. Boy, I, I read something like that, and, and I see that in Scripture, and, and I see the need for that in my life. And I stop and I think, what would happen if we took that seriously? What would happen if we all just took that seriously? Well, you know, we, we were tempted to say, it would change the world. <laughs> I don't quite want to go there. I think what we need to see first is it would change you. It would change me. It would change our minds. It would change our hearts. It would change the way we live. It would change the way we love other people. It would change the way we reflect who Jesus is. And it might even give you a chance to <laughs> change the uh, or impact a guy who, who was supposed to ship a, an item to you yesterday and it didn't get out until today. And, and it might give you a chance to take the grace that he's shown you and, and turn around and show him something eternal, some kind of eternal grace. I don't know. At the very least, it needs to change us. That's where we need to begin. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, we've got days of, that are frustrating. We've got days when problems arise. No one, no one schedules a refrigerator breakdown. Oh, but Lord, it, it, no matter what comes our way, whether it's health or whether it's sickness, whether it's a, a good day or a bad day, Every day is, a, is another day that you've given us by your grace. Every day is another day where you have shown us the incredible love that you have through your son by allowing him to empty himself of everything and take on the form of a human. And being found in the form of a human, take on the role of a servant and, and then dying the most cruel death imaginable, the death on a cross. And Father, as, as you have shown us through your son, let us show one another through our attitudes, through the way we, uh, through the way we put others first, through the way we greet them, through the way we love them, through the way we show them uh, the attitude, the heart, and the life of Jesus Christ. Let me finish just by, by reading the the end of of this song that Paul records for us here. 
after he's emptied himself, after Jesus has emptied himself even to death on the cross. Then we read in verse 9, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. What if someone makes that confession? What if it begins? Because you've shown them that attitude. You've shown them the love of Christ through the way you've treated them. This Sunday at Kansas Christian Church, we are continuing our look at the book, I Am a Church Member. There you go. It works like that. And the chapter we're looking at, this is a tough one. This is a chapter. The title of the chapter is, I Will Not Let My Church Be About Me. Uh, as a friend of mine and I used to always say, it's not about me and it's not about you. And uh, I'm going to share a little bit about that friend Sunday morning. I'd love to see you at 10 a.m. It's Pastor Appreciation Month, by the way. That's what October always is, Pastor Appreciation Month. And let me just tell you how much I appreciate every one of you. Thank you so much. I had someone stop me the other day and said, you know, I, I haven't been able to make it to church, been dealing with a lot of illness in my family, been dealing with a lot of struggles. And they stopped me and said, thank you so much for putting those videos online. And it just meant the world to me to know that these little videos that I make on Wednesday nights made a difference. Hope they make a difference to you. Maybe you might want to share this with your friends. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and let them uh, let, let it make a difference in their lives as well. Maybe. Couldn't hurt, right? Wherever you are, whatever you're doing this weekend, thank you so much for joining me here. God bless. Have a great week.